Welcome to the video. Uh, yeah, today I am standing versus sitting in a chair, so you're going to see a little more of like the outdoor light and things like that. Uh, this video basically is going to break down um, a, a decent holster draw that you can practice at home, dry firing, along with some other training aids, just because, uh, as you all know, since I'm not at the range, I'm not getting as many reps in. I don't get to shoot as much as I used to working there. You know, you get to shoot a lot more. Uh, so how do I maintain my skill set? That's pretty simple. 99% of it can be done at home dry firing. It's a little known secret working at the range. You're like, oh, you need to come to the range. You need to practice. You need to practice. Yes, you do need to go to the range to practice. That's how you learn how to control recoil management. However, the vast majority of the training that you can do can be done in the comfort of your own home without having to trek out to the range and spend a ton of money on ammunition and things like that. You just have to be honest with yourself. You know, if you're working on draws, your, your trigger press, whatever it is, and, you know, if you screw the pooch, be honest. Just be like, okay, I screwed that one up. Move on. Other things that help keep you honest, and we'll talk about those, are certain training aids that I absolutely adore. I love having them. Uh, some I've bought. One was given to me as a gift, uh, as actually a Father's Day gift. So we'll cover those a little bit later. But uh, I've been getting a lot of phone calls, and that's why this came about. Uh, these phone calls are from um, customers, uh, along with friends and all that, uh, that were looking forward to maybe doing some one-on-one -on -one training with me while I was employed, uh, getting some insight and work in on, on holster draws and like what to do with your hands, things like that. And basically it came down to, he's like, what am I supposed to do? I said, okay, here's what you're going to do. And I broke it down again. I was doing it over a phone. So sometimes it's a little hard to do, but I said, you know what, Ralph, I'll do a video just, just for you. So you can see it, practice it, go on, you know, going forward since I'm not going to be around. Um, so feel free to hit up the comments and let me know if this is going to help you guys also. All right. I know a lot of ranges, you don't get to practice holster work. So how do we practice holster work? You're going to do that in the comfort of your home. I don't care what kind of holster you're wearing. Um, I'd prefer and I'd recommend that you practice basically with your EDC holsters. That's the holster you're going to have most of the time. So if it's in the waistband, out of the waistband, and you're carrying appendix, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, or, or whatever, you're going to have to practice that the most. For today's purposes, we're just going to do some real basic stuff. All right, I'm wearing my actual uh, war belt, my gun belt, Fireland holster, P320, uh, extra mags. Everything is empty. The gun is completely empty. There is no magazine in it, so everyone can see it. Uh, I do get extra paranoid when I'm doing this. I usually check it, triple check it, double check. I have, if anyone's home, I have them check it, so on and so forth. All right. And again, I don't care what kind of holster you're using. I mean, I'm using a Safariland, and you could be using, you know, a basic Kydex holster. I know, I know it's dark. Uh, there you go. Let's see, Kydex holster. Uh, basic retention. There is no level two or anything like that. Um, if you're using something like this, which is a serpal holster, you're going to have that little button to overcome. Uh, this is a pretty good holster. Just locks right into the belt. And again, it's a serpa. It's a good holster, but I'm not a big fan of serpas when it comes to more rigorous training, just because if you get uh, dirt, rock, or other items stuck behind the button, your secondary firearm is going to get stuck in here, and you're not going to be able to get it out. Um, I have seen it pretty bad. So I prefer just regular, straight Kydex retention, uh, where it's just under tension, and it's just in, click, boom, there's really nothing. I mean, there, it's not going anywhere. It's not the securest. Because, you know, people can come up behind you and just pull it right out. So I prefer a little bit of retention. Safari Land, it's a thumb break. So that's what's going to unlock it, which is better. This other type here, 
Uh, I can't remember who makes this. Oh, I really wish I remember who made this holster. Um, it, it activates uh, very much like a Safari Land. It's got a hood on it. It does have a thumb release. It is a little awkward um, just for the grip once the gun's in there. And we'll go over this in a little bit because it is set up for a flashlight and there's a reason for that. And it's just on a basic riggers belt that you can just throw on top of anything or whatever. All right. So what am I doing with my hands? All right. I've seen a lot of things where people touch the abdomen, they touch their chest, um, they put their hand up, so on and so forth. What always works for me is because you want both hands to be occupied. You want both hands to be moving simultaneously and you don't want any lag. All right. So this hand, your dominant hand, obviously going straight. For the gun. All right, so we know where that's going. What am I doing with my support hand? Because the last thing I want to do is my support hand get in the way of my muzzle. All right, I don't want to do weird, crazy things like grab up here. I've seen people want to grab up front. This hand, if you're not giving it a job, is going to be doing some weird stuff. All right, because technically you're not in control of it anymore. It just it's idle. It gets to do whatever it wants. So, give it a job. Everything has to have a job, all right? I, when I teach trigger control, index finger has a job, right? There's always a point of your gun that you want to be touching. Glocks or the takedown levers on a P320. For me, it's this little circle. If you're a southpaw, then it's going to be the takedown lever. But that's the point where you always want to be touching, okay? I don't just willy-nilly put it anywhere. It, that is always going to be the goal. Touch there. I avoid down here. Because, like, the trigger guard here is really far away. I can't. I got little hands. I'm just going to end up here. So, always on there. Somewhere. All right? See? I can't even reach there. So, here, the trigger guard is quite big on the 320. So, I'm shooting for that little circle right there. All right? Anytime you're reholstering, make sure any extra clothing that you have on, whether it's jackets, shirts that are untucked, um, sweatshirts. I mean, it's cooler out, so we're wearing a sweatshirt. Um, you're going to want to move all of that material out of the way when reholstering. When you're doing the draw, sometimes it's going to be in the way. It is what it is. The point is to get it out as fast as possible. You're not going to want to sit there and pull clothing out of the way, not putting it away. That's a different story. If I'm putting this away, I'm going to grab my sweatshirt. I'm going to pull it taut. I want it out of the way, and I want a nice clear shot into the holster. I'm going to slowly guide it down into the holster. All right, I am not going to just jab it down in there. Why? Because this can get stuck up in the trigger well, pull the trigger on you. And now you're shooting yourself in the thigh, or the calf, or the foot, or whatever. And God forbid you just go and John Wick like four or five people, and you came out with no extra holes, and then you slam your gun down into your holster without paying attention. And then you pop yourself in the leg. You, you did that to yourself. All right. So getting it out of the holster, you want it as fast as possible. You don't have the rest of your life to get it out and get it in the fight. Putting it away, once all the threats have been eliminated, and you're putting it away, take your time. You have all the time in the world to move stuff out of the way and guide it in. All right, so if you're wearing a jacket, you're going to want to pull that jacket all the way up into your armpit and really guide that, that in. All right, that's why I prefer belts that go on the outside of everything um, for duty stuff. Okay, now when I do conceal carry, it's only one layer of clothing deep, and that is coming all the way up high so I can draw to get the gun out or whether it's on the side, three o'clock appendix, whatever I'm carrying. All right. Hope that answers those questions. So, what am I doing with these two hands? So, we know this one is going straight for the gun. This one, I like to bring up here near the chest. That's me. I'm actually touching myself. All right, so some people start off like this, and they'll do this. All right, I prefer this. A um, couple of reasons why. One, if this arm is ever injured in real life, and you have it in a sling, it is pretty much going to be in this position. All right. Uh, when you're practicing one-handed, this is what I'm doing. I'm grabbing onto my shirt. 
to make sure this hand doesn't do any weird and crazy things. All right, but since I'm going to be utilizing both hands, I don't want to be grabbing onto my shirt or a plate carrier or a recce rig or whatever. So touch here, gun comes up, I rotate forward, I'm going to marry up my hands, and I'm going to drive straight up to acquire my sights. All right, now depending on where your target is, if it's up close and personal, you're not even going to be aiming. You're just going to drive forward. All right, you're going to drive it forward and just start shooting. You're really not going to have time to acquire those sights. So again, depending on where your hands are, up like surrendering, if you're down, like relaxed, or for certain individuals, you're not going to be like this. You might be like this, and then this is going to complicate everything. So if you're running a carbine and it jams, breaks, something goes wrong with it, and you're having to switch to a secondary, this hand is holding onto the gun. So when you bring it down, it's going to move it out of the way. This is coming up. And then you're going to bring your hands up and come forward. But that's more advanced. For right now, we're just going to worry about what's on the belt and these two hands versus carbine and trying to do other movements, things like that. All right. So always start off slow. Speed will come. All right. So I don't care how you do it. Hands low, ready, you know, high, like you're giving up, praying, whatever it is, hands over your head. All right, but they have to move simultaneously. So as you're doing it, all right, both hands move. You're going to grab up, marry, drive forward, acquire that front sight. All right, now you can just work on that motion. And once you have that motion down and you're good and it's a second nature to where you're just like, well, it's here. Now, once you've got that down, your next step is, because I don't like when you come up and you're like, okay, oh, I'm ready to shoot. Listen, if your life depends on it, you need to be ready to shoot from right here. So as soon as I'm up and my muzzle is clear of me and any part of me, I am taking that trigger straight to the wall, driving forward, because I want to be able to shoot from any, even if I don't have my support hand on there, God forbid something's going on and I go like this. I want to be able to get up and pull that trigger, right? So I want to be up right there. Only pull the trigger once or put your finger on the trigger once you are clear of yourself. So I'm up, I'm out. Even if I'm here, all right, I'm actively doing something with this hand, like blocking, whatever. I can fire with this, all right? So nice and slow, all right? Two hand movements, up, on the wall, drive forward, find my front sight, pull the trigger, all right? Now, that all sounds great. It's all handy dandy, right? You'd be like, oh, yep, I'm good. Doesn't mean you're doing everything right, though, because we're adding a lot of movement. You could be cheating yourself and, and pulling the gun in one direction, screwing the pooch on that trigger, so how do we keep ourselves honest? Um, well, sometimes it's a little easier said than done. But the one thing I like to use, I'm just taking off the gun belt. So you can see, practice with this a lot because that's one of those things that I'm going to put on immediately. Um, I like to use the Mantis. Now, this is the X3. I purchased this myself. All right. All that it's going to come with it, this is not sponsored by Mantis by any means. They don't even know who the hell I am. Uh, you're going to come with the little block. Now, if your gun does not have an accessory rail or a Picatinny rail, you're going to have to go to the website and buy an adapter that fits your gun so this little block will work. And this is the X3. I don't care if you use an X10, whatever. Um, I'm cheap. X3 works just fine. And it comes with a little charger. All right. So, you're going to take it out of its box. All right. This one just has a little toggle that you flip down. And that's the little retaining part that goes on your accessory rail. 
So, some guns are going to be a little easier to get it on than others. The 320, that Picatinny rail, and this, there's not a lot of room for error. So if at first it doesn't go on, you're just going to have to kind of finagle it. Right? I promise it fits. I just had it on the gun. Because I was messing around with it. A few moments later. There we go. All right. Once you get it started, it's pretty easy after that. All right. You're going to pull it straight back. The little toggle here, you're going to pull down. Get it past that first bit of rail. And you're going to just want to make sure it's locked in. Now, you can move it further back if you want or whatever. It doesn't matter. All right. Now, the reason I have some holsters like this, just set up like this. It takes the light because, well, you see how that mantis is dangling down? It won't fit in a normal holster. So it's just, it's going to stop. So you're going to need a, a holster that's designed to have that flashlight. Right. Now that we have the mantis installed, whether it's the mantis 3, mantis 10, doesn't matter. It's going to hook up to your smartphone. All right. So you're going to open up your phone and you're going to have the app already installed. The app is Mantis X. So when you click it, it's going to come up and it's going to say connect or skip that step. We are going to want to connect it, but you need to turn your little adapter on. So on the bottom is the power button. You're going to get a green light so you know it's on and you're going to click connect. And then it's simply going to say to put your gun down. On a flat surface and don't touch it so it can marry up what you're gonna do it marries up just fine and then you have all of the drills all right you've got your non-dominant eye drill your open training a shot timer uh, a par timer a shoot no shoot benchmark there's just tons of things in here um, depending on the type of gun you're using though you're only gonna be able to really get one shot as in this is all clear. So you pull the trigger. All right, it fires. And now you have a dead trigger. All right, the gun has to cycle for that next trigger pull. That being said, there are training mags that you can buy for like the Glock 19, uh, the P320. There's a multitude of them. They run you about $100 a piece. And it's Looks like just a normal magazine, except it's got a spring-loaded um, little piece of plastic in here. When it's inserted and you pull the trigger, it is going to automatically reset the trigger for you, uh, much like one of the other mantises that we have, and I will show you in a second. All right, so we know it's empty. You want to just play around with it? That's fine. So you can start from low ready, bring it up, so on and so forth. It gives you a grade on a curve from like 0 to 100 like everybody's used to. Obviously, the closer you are to 100, the better off you're going to be. All right. Just for training purposes and this video, um, I am just going to start off aiming. And as soon as I hear the beep, I'll pull the trigger and we'll see where I score. All right. I haven't done this in about two, three weeks. So I'm sure I'm a little rusty. So we're just going to do. Open training, all right, you get a safety warning, okay, all right, now it asks a bunch of things on there that you can see, looks just like this, and it says, okay, the drill you're running, uh, is it dry or live fire, because you can use this with live fire at the range, right-handed, left-handed, and the position that you've put the little mantis on. Um, because depending on the type of gun, you might have an adapter and it may be in the rear, it may be on top, it may be on the bottom, it may be flipped facing a different direction. They give you all those options in there. All right, and then you have a little start button. So all you're gonna do is, I like to just put my phone down and then I'm just gonna hit start and I'm like, okay. One eternity later. Oh, I didn't wanna go off. Oh, okay, so. 
edit that bullshit out. Okay, so using the shot timer, all right, you're going to get that, that quintessential beep, all right, and then it's timed, and it's going to give you that score plus how fast you did it, all right? So we're just going to go shot timer. I'm going to hit start. I'm going to wait. All right. So then I hit stop. And it gives you your score. All right. Mine was an 84. Not the greatest. Not the worst. And I did it in about 1.5 seconds. So let's try it again. All right. I'm going to start low ready. All right. So did in 0.88 seconds, but my score went down to a 79. So you can just keep doing that, and it's going to hone it. Take your time, and it will tell you what you're doing wrong. The best part is open training. So when you hit start, you just get this. All right? It's just wide open, and all you're going to do is put your phone down, table, whatever you're doing. You're going to aim. All right? Cycle. Aim. Fire, aim, fire, aim, fire, aim. You're just going to keep doing that, all right? And what's going to happen is you're going to get an average. So I'm going to stop mine. My average was 86, and then you see those little red marks? Little red marks are going to tell you what you're doing wrong. So what was I doing? Uh, Two little trigger finger, fair enough. Um, pushing. I was driving the gun forward. I do admit to that. Uh, healing. So, sure. Um, and it tells you how to fix it, which is the nice part. And there's one more. Uh, oh, it's back to just pushing forward. So, the biggest culprit, too little trigger finger. So, how is it reading all that? I have no idea. I thought my finger was on there pretty good. Um, doesn't matter. The, the mantis is telling you what it is. So with that, take it with a grain of salt and just be like, okay, accepting of it. It, it, voodoo magic is telling you you're doing these things wrong. Trust in it. All right. Don't just be like, oh, I think it's a bunch of BS. Mm, now you're probably doing that. So it's basically a private lesson in a box. That's the best part. Is you don't you you don't need to go spend a ton of money every single time you want to work on something. Um, where I worked, we charged it was like one hundred and twenty dollars an hour. All right, that covered the instructor, the ammunition, all that good stuff. Hey, that's good. You're learning recoil management, all that stuff. That's awesome. That being said, you buy one of these. Or, Roughly the same price, and it's always available. You can always use it, all right? So, now, if you want to practice your draws, you're going to definitely need to put it on a gun, and with an accessory rail or a Picatinny rail, all right? Glocks usually have an accessory rail. There's only one little area to put it. Versus the 320 has a legit Picatinny rail on the bottom of it. All right. Six and a half hours later. All right. So we have it installed on our Glock 19. Uh, the nice thing is these also work with if you buy a cert gun. Cert guns are phenomenal. Um, I love them. They shoot little lasers, so on and so forth. It's great. This, you're not getting any of that. All right, so today I want to practice holster draws and my timing. That's when this little thing comes in handy. This is a really old belt. I'm just putting it on just so I can have something to hold the holster. All right. They even have to be on straight. I just want the holster in the proper spot. Alrighty. We know the gun is clear. Alright. I'm going to turn the mantis on. 
putting it in the holster, it's locked in. I really don't like this holster. Um, I don't like where that thumb brake is. It's annoying. Whoever designed it did not do a splendid job with it. All right. So we're going to go uh, shot timer on this one. Okay. All right. It's got to calibrate. So I'm going to lay it down. All right. It's calibrated. So I can pick it back up. So. Now, for this, if you definitely want to practice getting that hood clear and all that, for, for YouTube purposes, I'm going to keep the hood open. And we're going to go just for draw, punch out, and pull that trigger. All right? I'm not going to actually pull the trigger until I have a good sight picture. All right? So, we're going to lay it down. All right, I'm gonna stop it. So I was slow. Uh, it was two seconds flat. All right, so I'm gonna reset. All right, so y'all don't think I'm cheating. All right, because you're gonna see a cut. Yeah, I got a phone call. Um, so because I was distracted, I was quick with the gun, but. I got a 9.6. That's atrocious. All right. I'm going to stop. I'm going to reset. We're going to try this one more time. This time, I am definitely going to really take my time. I don't care about the time. I just, from draw, presentation, front sight, trigger pull, I'm not worried about the time. All the time in the world, I'm in a safe environment. I just want to get a nice, high score all around. So here we go. Hands are low. Grab, extract, forward. All right. Do it again so we can average it as a 70. All right. So that one not bad. 83. Do it again. We'll reset. Oh, didn't cycle the gun. Shooter ready. Abysmal. Seventy. All right, so it's definitely going to be showing you that you need to practice. Um, honestly, the Glock I haven't been running in quite a while. Um, it could come down to the holster. Uh, it could be the Glock itself, because I've been carrying the 320 mainly every day uh, and practicing with that the most. But at the same time, be honest with yourself. You just you need more practice. You could be having an off day. You know, I mean, there's a million things. All right. So I'd rather be screwing up now and having problems like this than the minute my life depends on it. I'd rather get all that out of the way now, where you're hee-hawing around and having those issues, than God forbid, that moment of truth, and then you have nothing but problems, all right? Again, just so you all see how this works. All right, so the hood comes up. All right, I'm going to pull this back a little bit. Bring it closer, all right. Your thumb's got to hit here. Not up front, but in the back. So when you're hitting it down, you don't really have your hand all the way forward to get the gun out. It's, it is a weird, weird um, way to unlock the hood. 
versus a regular Safari Land like this. It's the thumbs. Oh, sorry, it's right here, and it's a thumb sweep back, so you can get a good grip and pull up. They have other Safari Lands where, as you sweep in, your index finger is going to go past the safety, and your middle finger is going to activate the release on the holster, and then you can draw straight and go. So it's either going to be with your thumb or your ring finger, or your middle finger, rather. All right. So that covers the Mantis X3, X10, whatever you guys get. All right. One thing that I did get for Father's Day that I absolutely adore, and I love it, is the Mantis Blackbeard. This is not a cheap system. It will run you a couple of hundred dollars. It's a different app that comes with it. This, you need... Um, their PDF targets you download from Mantis themselves. You have to use your smartphone, the camera, to lock in on the target. And it's got these little weird QR code doodad things. Um, and it's going to give you live scoring that way. Okay? And they have different targets for different drills, so on and so forth. But it's going to replace basically the entire BCG. And this is a laser that fires out. Um, you do have to zero the laser. It comes with tools for that. All right? And then your magazine is the battery. So this is good in conjunction with the other one. And you can do a lot of dry firing with the Blackbeard. Um, one of the things I like to do is I don't get to set up the target. The target is set up. I, I'm unknown to it. I don't know where it is. The camera, everything's been moved. And I just get the told, hey, it's good to go. And this works for like trying to learn how to clear your home, things like that. As you come around and you're pieing a corner, a doorway, whatever, you don't know where the target is. All of a sudden, you're going to see the target, and you get to go pop, 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 pop. That's the nice thing about this is it does reset the trigger for you. So you pull the trigger, you're going to hear it go off, and it's going to reset it. It does it rather quickly. However, you can pull the trigger faster than this will reset. So make sure you're going at a decent speed, and you're not rapidly pulling that trigger super fast. And it's only going to register three shots, and you pulled it like six or seven times. So make sure you get that tempo down to where it's bang, 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 and you're not just trying to go super fast, okay? Um, so those are some training aids that you can use at home outside of just straight-up dry firing. I'm a big fan of dry firing. However, um, you're just like, okay, I'm good, I'm good. You fire. Was it good? I don't know. Looked good on my end. I don't have a target, though. So I don't know if I'm hitting low left. Maybe I'm, you know, instead of coming straight back on that trigger, maybe I'm hooking my finger. I'm not going to get as much feedback. And I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be able to be as honest with myself if I'm just dry firing like this. Because uh, there's nothing to tell me if I'm doing it right or wrong. However, that Mantis system will help you out, all right? I'm just letting you all know if you're serious about it. And you don't want to be spending a fortune going to the range all the time. Having a Mantis system is going to be great, okay? Um, hands down, it's one of the best systems out there. I know there's probably other systems out there. Uh, but Mantis, hands down, is like the gold standard. Um, it's pretty easy to navigate, things like that. Descriptions... And links will be down in the comments. Uh, it, it's going to go straight to Mantis. I don't get anything out of it. But I think it's important for you to learn how to shoot properly, safely, and to be accurate. Because we all know everything's getting worse. The world's on fire. It's not getting any better. And, well, there's a massive ammo shortage coming around the bend. Uh, you probably already noticed that Prices of ammunition have been spiking. Even 5.56. Five, I mean, 5.56 five, five, is, is probably the culprit right now just because 
Lake City, and they've they said, oh, we're shutting down all private sales. That that's to us, the civilians. It's all going to the military. And then they came out a couple of weeks later and said, oh no no no, we're not doing that. Who knows? All I know is I have seen prices of five five six going up. So if you're not into reloading and you don't have a massive stockpile and you want to conserve what ammunition you do have, yeah, the Blackbeard, the X3, the X10, it, they're all going to benefit you dry firing. At least you're getting some sort of feedback, all right? And I guarantee you, even if you're scoring really low and you feel like you, you, you suck at this, do it for about a half hour and you will see improvement. Pay attention to what you're doing. Pay attention to what the app is telling you that you need to fix. Take your time. Speed will come in the end. All right? That's pretty much all I have for you guys this video. As always, um, best way to support the channel is in the comments below. Go to the merch link. Buy some merch. Um, it affords us the ability to get cool things like this and bring it to you and show you and test things out. Um, Links for all of this stuff will down be down below also. And uh, that's pretty much it. Don't make excuses. There's easy ways to practice without blowing a small fortune at the range. Even though when you talk to the range people, they're going to tell you you need to go to the range. You do for recoil management. 99% of it, you can totally do it at home. Especially if you have a Mantis dry fire system. You can curb back on that range time and burning off all that ammunition, saving you a ton of money in the long run. All right, it's a little, little bit of money up front, but in the long run, you're going to save a ton of it. I've had these for a couple of years now, and they, they keep going. They're rechargeable, no problems. All right, that's all I got for this video. I will see you guys in the next video. Y'all have a great day.